Hello and you're very welcome along to LGFA HQ here in Dublin for the second in our mini-series on the LGFA talk show uh, based around creating a positive club coaching environment. So in our first show we give you a broad overview of what's to come and now we're going to drill down in a little bit more detail today uh, in the company of my guests. Liz Hughes is the chairperson of Trim LGFA in County Mead and William Harmon is National Development Officer with Remit for Coach Education. Folks, you're all very welcome. Thank you, Jackie. How are you? Good to have you here. Uh, Liz, we'll <coughs> kick off with yourself. Um, a dub who is uh, currently chairperson of Trim LGFA begs the obvious question, how did, how did all that come about? Indeed, yes. Thanks, Jackie. Um, I married somebody from County Mead, so I went kicking and screaming down to County Mead and uh, it's been home for 16 years and I absolutely love it. Um, and I got involved in GAA. I don't have a football background or a GAA background. I suppose I grew up in an era where girls didn't really play GAA. Um, but my husband did play for, for Gaelic for many years. And then we had children. And I do joke and say I got involved in the Trim GAA club to spend more time with my family because they were all playing and coaching. Um, so I started about 10 years ago um, and they needed a, a coach for nursery and my children were, were at that age. So I got involved in nursery coaching and I've been very involved ever since. Excellent. And, and uh, if you can chart the, the formation and progress of the Trim LGFA club in terms of um, its formation and maybe the, the breakaway from the, from the mainstream club. Okay, well, Trim is, is a very long established club. It's 100 years or more in existence, um, so it's steeped in history. Um, like other clubs nationally, um, ladies' football is much newer and ladies' Gaelic games are much newer to the club. Um, so it's been in existence for about 10 or years or so competitively. And as numbers grew and participation rates grew f for girls, we would have identified that we probably needed a committee ourselves to oversee the governance and registration or whatever. So we just started our own LGFA committee, which was uh, which is part of the overall club structure, but it, it looks after specifically female and women's football issues. And we started our committee just two years ago. So 2018 was our first year in existence, and this is our second year now, 2019. And you're the chairperson. I'm the chairperson this year. Um, last year I was a committee member, and this year I volunteered to be chairperson or, or <coughs> were volunteered whatever a, the case. a bit of both um, <coughs> how do you find the role in terms of its its scope and its um and the remit that you have yeah it's as i say we're only two years in existence so a lot of a lot of it is about finding where where we fit into into the club and part of what our involvement with the national lgfa was to identify that was to see where we do fit into the club and how we're going to drive the lgfa arm of the club forward it's a very varied role the chairperson role um i didn't really know when i went in how varied it was going to be it's it's hugely rewarding there's a lot of work in it there are challenges too but in the main it's been a really really positive experience for me yeah and you've been doing a lot of good work and we're going to get get really into that now um as well Liz, not forgetting that William is here as well. William, so feel free to pop in at any time. Um, I've two initiatives circled here, Gaelic for Mothers and Others. Mm -hmm. As you <coughs> mentioned earlier on, the conversation is you, you, you have no real active uh, experience of playing, but you have participated in Gaelic for Mothers and Others. And then we're going to touch on um, a very important initiative that we have here in the Ladies Gaelic Football Association, how it's benefited your club, is Gaelic for Teens. So Gaelic for Mothers and Others. Yeah, I was just asked to play um, a couple of times and for a couple of years I didn't. I said, no, I've never played and I've no background and couldn't see myself doing that. But eventually I said, go on, I'll give it a go. And it was hugely enjoyable. I did that for a year or so and it gave insight into what it's like being on the pitch. As I say, I coached nursery level and I've also I've helped out coaching up along the, the ranks for, for girls as well. But I think you need the experience to be on the pitch and see what it's like to, you know, for the other side. So hugely enjoyable. Um, I'm, I'm no correspondent and I'm never going to set the world on fire, but a very, very enjoyable experience. And Gaelic for Teens, then, in terms of what it's done for um, your club. Um, Liz, can you talk to us a little bit about that? Yeah, well, like I said, Jackie, 
uh, we set up as a committee in 2018. And so our, I suppose our first year as an LGFA committee, we really we looked at governance and we got structures, admin structures in place in terms of our registration, our fixture secretary. You know, that's that's kind of what we did for, for year one. But we were very aware that we needed to know where we were going. You know, we needed a mission statement um, and we needed to, there was a lot of things that we felt we wanted to develop, but we had no clear pathway as to how to do that. So towards the end of 2018, we said, okay, our goals and our objectives for 2019, 2020 will be to devise a mission statement to look at our values, but we weren't really sure how to go about doing that. Um, the Gaelic for Teens initiative came up and we, we looked at what the Gaelic for Teens initiative was about and very much I know that one of the, the, the ground, the background to the Gaelic for Teens initiative is about player participation and retention. We have huge numbers um, participating, obviously we wanted to keep those playing, but I think the bit that really stood out for us was that the, the focus of the Gaelic for Teens programme was very much around coaching philosophy and coaching behaviour and that there was an underlying values piece in the Gaelic for Teens programme. So when we looked at the programme, we felt that this was something that we could really use as a platform for driving ourselves on. Okay, mm. so for viewers and listeners, we have some bullet points on the board um, here. And William, I'm going to bring in on this because I know you're a big admirer of Liz and what, uh, what she's doing with Trim LGFA. And in terms of, and Liz is going to talk about um, 20 key action areas that they would have uh, um, mm. formulated as well, and 18 of those already achieved, which is hugely impressive. Um, but to effect change and to bring about that um, positive coaching environment that, that you talk about, William, you need leadership. Okay, and obviously Liz here is is very very uh, prominent in the, in that regard in the role that that she has, but also that that leadership layers down and it has at various. Yeah, and I think uh, that's probably the the probably key focus, the starting point really in terms of is that leadership, that one or two or three people in a club kind of recognizing, you know, do we have to really think about what we're doing here? You know, are we meeting what we're what we set out to be? What are the bigger picture? Which is, you know, can we are we meeting whereby more girls are playing our game, more girls are staying in our game? Are we doing uh, what is required to ensure that happens? And I suppose that comes into the whole area of the of the leadership piece. And with the gate for teams, I suppose what we're trying to do is get people to reflect and on. Are they doing a good job? How are they doing it and what they need to do? And I suppose with the Gaelic for Teens and the example of, of Liz and Trim is that, you know, as a group, they came into the Gaelic for Teens and said, you know what, maybe this is something we need to divul divulge into a bit, a bit more further uh, in the club. Uh, but they showed the leadership to do that. So instead of coming to the initiative and learning and stuff and going back and possibly, you know, just doing one or two small changes, the Liz and, 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 uh, and all the, the guys who attended the Gaelic for Teens said, you know what, we need to bring this to another level. But they showed that leadership and they went back and they acted on it which is was a fantastic and you know and, and, and the steps that we're talking about here and we spoke about in the last show was about whole area about philosophy and values which Liz is going to and the importance of that and getting buy-in you know I think Liz is a, 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 and, a, and and Trim Ladies Football Club are a real good example of how they go about that process and you highlighted there 20 action points and 18 achieved in so little time it's, it's phenomenal and I'm really looking forward to hear how, how you achieved that because I think um, going to the Gaelic for Teens is one thing but acting on what's probably the content being delivered is another thing um, so really looking forward to it Liz, and I just want to compliment on that and with the Gale for Mothers it is a great initiative it is a great initiative it's good fun it's good crack you know you get to meet new people social learn the skills of the game and we actually here in LGFA I'm going to be working with my colleague uh, Vincent Whelan regarding the whole area of how can we actually you know support uh, the, the women involved in Gale for Mothers from a coach education point of view as well because they have so much to give back to the club as well whether it be an administrator as a player or as a coach so there are avenues there regarding the Gale for Mothers as well but um, really looking forward to hearing your story now regarding that, that whole area of that, that leadership and how you got people to buy into what you're trying to achieve um, so looking forward to that, yeah. Okay, well I suppose what we did with the Gaelic for Teens, <coughs> as Will said there was, we used that as a platform um, to drive the club on and to drive the LGFA in trim on. And what we did was we did an action research piece while the Gaelic for Teens initiative was running. <coughs> Excuse me. So for anyone that doesn't isn't aware, the Gaelic for Teens programme runs over a couple of months and Will, you can correct me if I'm wrong here at any time. Um, and there's, you know, there, there's three workshops, at least three workshops that the coaches have to attend. Um, they're usually a day long <coughs> there's an initial one as well before that 
So I attended with nine coaches, um, nine male coaches, as it happened, who were all coaching teenagers, teenage girls. Excellent coaches, I have to say, and they're all so committed. So, so we attended that program and... Then what you do is, part of that is you bring back what you learn and you do three sessions with the, the participants, with the teenage participants. You go back for another training day and you do three more post the training day. So that's it in a nutshell, but Will can correct me on the, the timelines there or whatever. So we use that then, as we said, while that was going, that we would do an action research piece. <clears throat> and action research, I suppose, is different to other research in that it's you change it as you're going it's live research so rather than just doing a survey and then changing things afterwards we change things as we went so we had two aims kind of in in the research piece that we did so the second aim was around changing the sessions and looking at the sessions and seeing what the what the players enjoyed and what they didn't enjoy and what we could do differently but our primary aim, as I said at the outset, was to look at how we could create a, a value statement, a mission statement, how we could use the Gaelic for Teens as a platform to shape LGFA and Trim going forward. <coughs> so that's what we did. Um, do you want me to say a little bit about how we how yeah, the no, process? And I, I suppose and I'm looking for, and I suppose when you when you hear words of, of values <coughs> and mission statements and stuff, and I suppose you can make it very simplistic. It's just kind of getting a bit of clarity. I, I presume mm -hmm. just a bit of clarity on look where we're going and how we're going to get there. Really, do you know, and that does having your values and philosophy and how we're going to you know, that will help you with that. So yeah. I'm really looking forward. So so you're doing your action and research, and that's you know, that's excellent. So how do you go about that? So what was the process? Well, I, I'm very interested to hear how that process worked within your own club. Okay. So what we did was, as I said, we used the Gaelic for Teens as a platform. So given that, how I've outlined, that we had the, the six sessions, we used those sessions to talk to the people who were at the coalface. And by that, I mean, we did focus groups with the parents of the players. And we asked them very simple questions around what are we doing well and what could we do better? And we very much put it to the parents that this was a warts and all exercise that we, you know, of course, it was great to get good feedback, but we really wanted to know what we could change and what we could do better. Um, so we spoke to the parents of the players and we asked them then if they were looking at the values of Trim LGFA, what would they be? You know, what words would they associate with a good, a good club and what do they think we should aspire to? So we did that with the parents. So we did a number of focus groups with the parents. And then we also met with the players, the teenagers, and asked them similar questions. You know, asked them, what are we doing well? <coughs> what could we do better? We, we went a bit further with the actual players, the teenagers themselves. <coughs> we asked them, because one of the things we were learning about on the Gaelic for Teens, which was hugely influential for us, was what keeps teenagers playing sport and what stops teenagers playing sport. And I think for the coaches, that was a really important learning exercise. You know, what that... Well, well, we found that fr from what the, the ambassadors on the course were teaching us was that teenagers and teenage girls in particular have so many competing areas on, on, their, on their time and their demands on, on their time in terms of the other things that, that in their lives, you know, that, and I suppose we were very much coming from uh, football is, is our thing. So, you know, uh, whereas they're teenage girls, they have exams, you know, they have relationships, they have social media, they have all of those. Um, and, and I think... Actually, you know, mm. On that point, just, you know, the, and the research is backing that up in terms of when they're looking at, you know, girls, why they drop out of sport, one of the top ones was other commitments, you know, whether it be school and, and relationship, you know, so it's just something to be very wary of. And just mm. before you move on, uh, uh, Liz, in terms of uh, the parents' engagement, was there a good kind of, I suppose, engagement from the players in terms of uh, uh, participation? You know, before you move on, just I want to go back to that point in terms of was there a good participation from parents in relation to your action and research? It was difficult to, to get the parents to come in initially. I think <coughs> because it was a very new approach and like for, for parents and I know parents did comment and <coughs> you know it was one of the comments that we kind of published in the research was that one parent did say it was the first time she was ever asked to come into the club and give her opinion um, and I know that th there was days when I had to go down and really coax parents in because and I'd lots to say but I know myself I'm involved in other sporting organizations or whatever it can be daunting going into if you hear there's research or there's you know there's values there's also always the fear that you're going to get roped in to, <laughs> to coach or do a job or do something and that was something you know so we had to we had to work hard we reckon 
I mean, there was there was sixty five girls took part in the in the Gaelic for teens, and we reckon about like almost a third of them were represented by a parent. It's not huge numbers, and it is something that I mean, in terms of that that, that would be one parent came, um, for about a third of the girls, and again in our study we kind of we, we said that that was a limitation, but it was still a third of parents of those girls, and it was still very you know the, the people that did come very much engaged. It, like one of the recommendations was that we kick it on you know we could do it again we could do it with a wider audience um but the parents that attended certainly were really engaged they had lots to say um and they very much them and the players and the coaches very much shaped the value statement it wasn't us yeah and i I think that's a very good point made about the parents and of course (coughs) being being asked for their opinion and i suppose making that kind of you know a regularity so you know why we do not just do it once we do it on a more regular occurrence and i think when people like ask for their opinion you're building a relationship as well you know you're getting to kind of build those relationships and you were sent there about you know um you know going back to your original original point that you finished on in terms of the uh why players play our sport you know and understanding that Uh, and the only way you can understand why players are coming in the gate is by asking (laughs) just ask them you know why are you here and sometimes we as coaches possibly kind of, you know, have one perception of why girls are here. And then, but when we ask, you know, it might be totally, so are we in line? So are we coaching in line with why, why our, you know, our girls are want to play the game? And I think understanding why our players are coming in the gate will assist you in how you go about your coaching style. Mm-hmm. So I think that was a vital, important, you know, in terms of asking the players. So um, that's, that's a fantastic, asking the players why they're coming in and then you adapt, yeah. So how did that progress on then? So you've asked all their opinions, you know why they're coming in the gate and stuff. How, how where did it go? from there so you had your your research all done and where did yeah, it go from there if I you don't suppo- mind me asking yeah I suppose from the from that point in terms of the coaching and the bit of the, the learning around that um, the coaches certainly would have shaped their their sessions based on that what we found from our players was very much what stood up with research that we'd been taught about on the Gaelic for teens course which is football wasn't the number one reason or motivation for our players attending training um, it's, it was friends and fun and football was third kind of down the ranking and that for me was, was an eye opener it was certainly I, I feel and I know from talking to the nine really good coaches that came with me that was informative for them because obviously they're coming from football you know at their core um, so finding out that they were there for their friends first and, and th- the reasons that got them to go to training were the very same reasons that prevented them so if their friends weren't going they weren't likely to go, you know, and that's so. So that was really that was a huge insight, and that just on, just on, <coughs> that, just on that point, um, just on that point, uh, just kind of uh, just came into my head there as you say that, you know, the reasons why they so the girls, their friends aren't going to train, they won't go. So sometimes, you know, clubs have, you know, there might be major disco on, you know what I mean, like, and you may have a training session on the same night, you know. So therefore, do you make decision? Do you go against the grain and try and go ahead with that training session, or do you let the the, the disco is possibly more important? So you got to change your training session, you know, and. That, it's just a very simple point I just picked up there and that is that you know coaching to understand you know if the disco the disco is important so let the girls go to the disco and you can have training either before or the next day and you can guarantee the commitment will be given so it's just understanding that kind of small concepts yeah so apologies yeah, so and, uh, and I think it, it's it's was that kind of learning which has shaped where we're at and, it, and it's to use that term it is a journey you know we're not we're nowhere near there yet but those learnings I suppose another thing that we learned about on the course which I would have had an awareness that we needed to to look at, but very difficult to do, was the whole thing around, these are teenage girls. So you're, you're talking about issues that affect teenage girls in terms of where they are from a development point of view. Issue, I mean, I, I mentioned there it was myself and nine male coaches, that's who attended the Gaelic for teens, and primarily a lot of the coaches in trim on the ladies' side are males. Now we, we we're bringing in more females, um, and that's one of our strategic areas that we're working on, and each, each team, each coaching team has a female involved but traditionally it has been because it was the guys who were given up their free time to do it um so so the learning around the things that prevented teenagers attending was really was it was important and some of the guys you know would have said to me like geez we would never would have thought of that you know things like menstrual cycles or whatever the ambassadors in the course were very knowledgeable around that and you know got us thinking really thinking outside the box and I think our coaching policy has been shaped around what we learned yeah and I think that's a good point made in terms of I suppose to get it for teens and in general in coaching in general and our coaching environment just need to start thinking a small bit differently about what we're doing 
just thinking how can we improve but I think you just need to look at things from a different perspective which I think is a huge example of what uh, Trimmer showing they just looked at things just differently and, and are modifying how they went about their business uh, in a different way as a result you know and, and I just think that's a very very important point you made there Liz just, you just looked at things differently but in doing that you engage with the key stakeholders that's your parents your players and your coaches you know the key stakeholders are involved in the decision process and what you're going to go about and when you involve people they'll connect and they'll more likely will, will want to stay involved. So I think that's a, just a kind of a good learning here in terms of your culture you're talking about and changing the culture because yeah. tradition is hard. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, it's very easy to revert back to type. We, we deliver this all the time. You know, this is the way we're going to go about it. You know, uh, we're still getting good numbers. But research shows that 10% of girls that we gain, we're losing 10% on the other side. So you mightn't see it visibly, oh, we're, still, we're keeping our numbers well, but in research has shown that, you know, 10% of girls are coming into our game are going out the other side 10%. So we're actually, we still have to quite to, you know, think about what we're doing differently. So I just think you need a small bit of a patience in your journey. So, yeah, so that's... So, I just a question that's come into my head just on that, um, and, you know, you actually preempted it there, William, in terms of the fact that Liz, you're, you're, you are a young club, right, and you talk about live research, and it seems that the club is progressing so, so quickly. Um, but the fact that you're fresh, new, uh, does that enable change to happen quicker than, say, a more established club where you're trying to maybe, there might be a little bit more resistance? Would that be would that be a fair yeah, point? Yeah, I think, as I say, the, the LGFA were only two years in existence. Um, and I'm very, very fortunate in that I have a excellent committee the LGFA committee are really dedicated they would be very progressive they're very open um the coaches that I and, and the, the coaches are much more established than the committee um but they're so committed so open to change to new ideas and we've lots of debate too it's not all a walk in the park by any manner or means um and you need to have that you know and I would be you know I come from a point where you have to be balanced and but I mentioned there about you know if a lot of male coaches. I'd be very much coming from a from a place that you don't throw the baby out with the bathwater in terms of they're excellent coaches, and I want the best coaches, irregardless of whether they're male, female, or whatever. You know, uh, so I I have to. I've done a lot of learning too, and I'd be very mindful, as I said at the outset. I'd be very mindful that apart from my little stint with the Gaelic for mothers and others, you know, my, my coaching, my, my football background isn't, isn't as complex or as, as uh, some of the other coaches there. So we learn from each other. Um, now we do have, like, there's, a, there's the LGFA is one component of the, of the club. And the, the, so there's hurling and there's boys football and men's football and there's camogie. So we, tr we try very much to, to work with them and in tandem with them. But we have our own, we, we have our own mission statement and our own value statement, which we would feel ro is the <coughs> rose in with the overall club ethos. We've been very mindful of that too. And we're, there's an exec that's over the LGFA committee, so we're represented on that too. And we, we, you know, we, we consult with them and we bring our ideas to them and let them know what we're doing and where we're going. Like the, the environment seems really strong there, William. Um, in terms of, if I can just go back to Liz for a second, William, in terms of, of the, the action areas, I like, I like maybe a little bit more around those and what you identified from the research that you wanted to then um, put in place. Uh, 18 of 20 have been achieved. Look, we're not going to ask you what the last two are, but maybe you can reveal some of the, the, the key ones from the 18 that you've already managed to achieve. Yeah, it's like some of them are very simple. I know it sounds impressive. Some of them are very simple fixes, to be honest, Jack. Like some of them were things like it, the parents identified they didn't know who the committee were. Like they didn't know us. They didn't, you know. Um, and so we needed to change that very quickly. And that was a very simple exercise in terms of putting our names up on the notice board. You know, we, we hadn't got a notice board, so we needed to get a notice board. We got a whole wall then. The club were very kind in giving us a wall. Um, so we have an LGFA wall. 
and we made sure then that on that we have contact numbers and names and who the chairperson is and so that was a sim- that was done in, in you know so so some stuff is very simple some of the other action areas were around developing a coaching philosophy that's a much bigger piece of work Absolutely. um so where we're at with that is we have it achieved and so far as we have it developed we're at, we're at the process where we need to get it ratified and in 2020 bring it in um some of the other areas were around ensuring that all coaches have at the at minimum fund fundamentals as a coaching course um so that was again something that we could easily address um so so some of the more easy fixes and some of them are more complex obviously as i said our primary aim was around developing our value statement so we have that done that's been ratified that's up for display we have our AGM coming up. We'll be giving out copies of that to you know everybody at the AGM, but it's up, hanging up on the wall. So we now have a trim LGFA mission statement. We now have a trim LGFA vision statement. So our mission statement is what we're about. Our vision statement is where we would like to see ourselves. And then we have the values that underpin that. And that all came from the Gaelic for Teens initiative in terms of that it, it's a culmination of what parents, what players and what coaches felt we should be about. And just uh, just before I go back to you, and just a little bit of housekeeping while we're on that uh, point in terms of feedback and getting in touch. Um, if, you, if you're watching and you want to get in touch with William with any queries, he's William.Harman at lgfa.ie is the email address. You can comment underneath these posts or if you're listening in, similarly email William.Harman at lgfa.ie. Um, if people want to find out more about your club, mm-hmm. um, Liz, where can we find you? Are, are you on social media? Are you part of the Trim GA Club? Or what's the best way of getting in touch? Here we are part of the Trim G- GA Club. Um, our, probably the best place is Facebook. You know, if you go onto Facebook, we're, we're there. We have a website. I know the executive are current are looking at the website currently in terms of updating that. But Facebook is probably it's the most live place to, to contact us. And if they message us there, you know, and if they want to, our PRO is very involved in that. So if they want to contact us through Facebook, there's no problems at all. And I'd happily like some clubs that did the Gaelic for teens with us. Um, did contact me afterwards and we did disseminate some of our material to them because they wanted to do similar work and I'd have no difficulty at all. We're delighted to do that. I suppose that's what, something that we really would love to do because we'd like to learn from other clubs too. I think one of the Gaelic for Teens things, a kind of a spin-off, was it that, uh, you know, there was a bit of networking then that you meet other clubs and you meet people. And, and that's what we want from these shows, William, is, is for people to get in touch and to share their experiences and to... Uh, to to strengthen that we- that network that it looks like it al- already has been and established. Just, and just there, like Joe Jackie, just to, just to wrap up on that. I, and I, what I'm learning, if you don't, what have I learned from Joe you know, the last half an hour? I know Joe you know, time and stuff is that number one, you showed leadership. Okay, you you came you t- came to a Gaelic for Teens initiative. You c- listened to what was going on. You said, right, okay, what can we do differently back in our club? But you showed leadership in that yourself and the other eight or nine coaches came. You said, right, we're going to go after this. Then I like the way you kind of you know conversed with you know the key stakeholders, the the players, the 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 the, the parents, and listen to them and listen to what is it you know, and wasn't be afraid to listen to the negative stuff as well. Um, then I like the way you just framed it all together, okay, and get clarity, okay. We have our values, we have our philosophy, and we have look, these are few like, twenty areas. Like they're probably just twenty sentences, twenty just twenty bullet points that we need to work on and to get through the eighteen of them is fantastic. And I suppose what, one thing I want to learn there is that you're never going to everybody in the club to agree. Everything. <laughs> All you need is a commonality. That everybody can see the bigger picture, what the bigger picture is, and everybody go towards that. But I believe for buy-in, you need everybody to give an opportunity to have their say, an opportunity to have an input, and have that on a regular account. So therefore, okay, if things don't work out, we can always come back and listen again. So I think that buy-in is vitally important, but understand that we're not going to satisfy everybody, but once there's a commonality, and everybody going to the same goal, that, uh, that's key. And I suppose another thing that I've learned is that the journey is slow. It doesn't happen overnight, even though you made massive progression, um, which is fantastic. I think it's a, a slow journey to, ch- to change tradition and change culture. So I suppose they're the kind of key areas, uh, just, to, just to wrap up on, on, on today, really, uh, Jackie, is that... You know, that leadership that was shown, um, clarity in where you want to go by getting what are your values, what's your philosophy, and what are those key guidelines or policies, but getting buy-in in terms of engaging with your key stakeholders and you know, listening to the good and the bad, uh, and then everybody going at the one common goal, the bigger picture for the common for the common good. So um, I, I'm really impressed, Liz, and, and the very best look, and really impressed with that. Yeah, yeah uh, William, I, I understand now why you brought Liz in, because it's, uh, it's a great overall picture that you, you, you've painted of the club, which is still a very young club as well there's a lot done more to do as the old as the old slogan goes and we wish you well and thanks for coming in 
Um, Thank you. So my guests uh, today, I'm Jackie Cahill uh, from LGFA. William Harmon was here, National Development Officer with Remit for Coach Education. And Liz Hughes, Chairperson of Trim LGFA. Check them out on Facebook. It's probably the best uh, point of contact. If you want to have your say, William.Harmon at LGFA.ie or comment under any of our social media posts. So thanks for watching and listening. And we'll be back very, very soon with the next show. Bye-bye. Mm-hmm.